Yeah. Sure. I, you know, I actually was scheduled to be um, at work yesterday at 8 p.m. for my regular shift as, a, as an ICU doctor. And uh, what happened is that uh, uh, I actually arrived to the hospital. I wasn't really listening to the news or paying attention. I had my dinner and then I went to the hospital for a regu uh, preparing for a very regular evening shift. And uh, when I arrived to the hospital, my colleagues have you know, asked me, Were you, are you watching the news? And very quickly, uh, we found out that there is potentially a mass casualty. And then the hospital administration um, activated what we would call in the medical world a uh, code orange, which would allow the hospital to tap into a lot of resources, whether it's personnel, physician, nurses, respiratory therapists, etc., or equipment, medications, even parking spots, police, uh, everything. And, uh, and uh, that was, I think, called around 8 or 9 o'clock. I can't remember the exact time. Um, and very quickly, within the hour, uh, there was a massive number of nurses, uh, physicians, uh, people coming from everywhere trying to do their part and to help with this. Um, obviously, all the people that arrived were assembled in the emergency department into teams because each team would take care of one patient and they would fully take over the care of that patient in terms of stabilization and management and treatment. And that team has a physician, an emergency department doctor, a surgeon, uh, a nurse or two, a respiratory therapist, um, and, and many others. Uh, obviously, it's, 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 a, it's a full team. And the amazing thing for me is that uh, for most of us, we really never really experienced a code orange before a mass casualty. And uh, the fact that the hospital was able to, and the hospital personnel were able to assemble into these amazing teams uh, within an hour or two um, was quite incredible. I mean, we, we practice these code oranges and how to form these teams, but uh, you know, most people on these teams have never actually participated in one, including myself. We, we've never been on one. Um, and so in the emergency department, the nurses were wearing their yellow gowns and the, the doctors had a, a, a red vest and people had their name tags. And very quickly, the patients uh, started to arrive and the emergency department uh, was essentially a, a, a massive area of, of just teams working in parallel, but also in conjunction with, with each other and run by one of my colleagues, Dr. Uh, Bruce Claude. And, you know, it was just amazing that the emergency department was so loud, but yet it was so quiet. Each team leader would uh, tell uh, team members what to do and what uh, he or she wants them to proceed with. Um, and really, um, within, within those few hours, we managed to triage and take all these patients and people really contributed in a, in a significant way um, in, a team, in a team group fashion. Uh, that was quite incredible. I mean, people uh, have really, some people don't never even practice maybe for Code Orange, uh, but you've had, you've had physicians who were messaging me and texting me asking, you know, can we come in to, to help with this? You know, I'm not on call, I'm not even working. Uh, some people have even left town and they said, can I drive back and, and let me help? Uh, I know a few nurses that were actually not even in Saskatoon anymore. They were to visit their families in these little towns outside of the Saskatoon, drove back to help. So it was quite incredible how the teams formed in such a short uh, uh, notice, uh, yet they functioned uh, as if this is something that they do every day and as, as if it's something they practice for every day, even though uh, really nobody had more than an hour or two notice. You know, I, I've never actually personally had this experience here, uh, but as a physician, I actually volunteered in Syria in 2012. Um, I went uh, to Syria for about a week and a half, and I worked in a war zone uh, where mass casualty was expected, and obviously resources were not as uh, prevalent as and available as here um, in, in, in Saskatoon. And so for me, it was, uh, it was almost a flashback to, to those moments. Uh, but, you know, once you get into that area, even last night, I think everyone was what I would like to refer to as they were everybody was in the zone. Everybody was focused on the task. Everyone knew that this is 
going to be tragic. This is going to be probably one of the most horrible things that our nation has gone through in, in, in many years. And so everyone had uh, a goal uh, in mind that they want to make this tragic event less tragic um, to, to improve the outcome for our patients, for our young uh, hockey players. And so, uh, you know, everyone was focused on their task and made sure that, uh, that that was the only thing that mattered, not our personalities or egos or, or preferences or anything or our titles. Everyone did whatever was best for our patients. You know, I, I think once Code Orange is called, um, a, a, a mass email and phone calls would go to all the staff. Um, and obviously, this is where I find it very incredible that, you know, it's not like they mandated for people to come back in. People were calling in. In fact, at some point, I had to tell a lot of the physicians, please don't come in. We don't need any further help. Like, we have enough people. Now, if you came in, you would actually uh, uh, cause a lot of... Um, congestion, if you will, in, in, the, in, the, in the limited area. And so people were, were, were wanting to come in, people wanting to come and participate and help and do their part, uh, even though they were not really mandated. It was a Friday night. Many people had plans. Many people were out of town. But, you know, this is the, this is what I, the beautiful thing about Saskatchewan. And, you know, uh, Saskatoon is relatively a larger city in Saskatchewan, but uh, we're surrounded by many small towns. And a lot of these nurses and respiratory therapists and physicians and 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 come from these small towns and these players come from those small towns so to a lot of these personnel these are family members these are people that they know uh, and they may not have known the individual patient or the individual hockey player but they know of him or they know of his family or they know of someone that knows that and so it made it much more than just a job it made it much more than just an acute event or or an incident that we need to deal with this was personal to people this was uh, uh, this was your your fellow uh, uh, you know town uh, citizen, if you will, and so um, I think that really helped a lot in the sense that people felt that this was not just a patient, but this was rather someone beyond just a patient. Um, it was someone that they they maybe grew up with or knew, um, and and it made it you know feel that they don't they didn't really need someone to mandate them to come back in. Uh, they uh, were self-mandated to, to come back in. And, and I know that many of my colleagues and many of my friends um, were telling me that they, they really wanted to come in, but they were told, no, no, we have enough resources, don't come in. Um, and that speaks volume to me about um, the, the level of motivation that people have here um, at our hospital. Um, and I, I should also mention that, you know, pulling something like that off in a, in a very successful fashion really required a lot of the administrative work to, to be there. And so uh, I, I think that the hospital administration deserves a, a, a huge uh, congratulations on, 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 uh, on, on making this horrible, tragic event a little bit less tragic for these patients and their families. Correct, yeah. Sorry, describe. The state of the family, sorry. You know, I, 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 um, I, I prefer not to go into a lot of details about that to, for the protection of my patients and, and, their, and their privacy. But, uh, you know, th 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 we're talking about very young people who were really going to play hockey. And, uh, and you know, you expect your son to, uh, to go play hockey and then come back home. And I don't think anybody uh, expected that... Uh, they would be uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a tragic accident um, and being transferred to a tertiary hospital for, um, for stabilization and to fight for their lives. So you could imagine uh, the state of mind of these families um, and, and all the chaos that comes with mass casualty um, and, and until the police was able to give them a bit more information, uh, there was definitely a lot of worried families and a lot of anxious families. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, does this take any particular toll on the medical staff to be able to 
You know, I, I think that, um, you know, I, I think that for the most part, w w when, the pa when our patients start to come in, uh, I think a lot of us, we were really focused um, on them and we were really focused on what's going on that I think a lot of us suppressed um, the emotional part of, of, of this uh, brutal, uh, tragic event. Uh, but I think that once uh, things settled down a little bit, um, I know there was a picture that was circulated by the media with where three people were holding hands, three, uh, I don't know if you've seen that picture. And, um, and, you know, for me, when I saw that picture, I could not help but uh, tear up because, you know, for, for, for team members to be holding hands and sticking together despite all of this um, was quite the incredible scene. Obviously, once things settle down, you know, you start to play everything that you just went through. Frankly, I remember that it was 10 p.m. or 9 p.m. when we started. And then the next thing I remember, it was six o'clock in the morning. I don't know how time passed by uh, in those six, seven hours in between. I think that this is going to leave um, an everlasting tragic uh, impact on these towns. Remember, um, the, a lot of these towns have uh, 5,000, 3,000, 2,000 people. Um, and in these towns, people literally know everyone that lives in the town. And they grew up together. They went to the same school and, and, and slept at each other's houses. And, and so it's not that, you know, oh, uh, just you know, somebody's son, it's, it's, it's the town's son, it's, it's everybody's son, uh, it's everybody's uh, hockey team. And so I think that the, uh, uh, I think that the, uh, the, 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 those towns are going to uh, have a very difficult time uh, in, the, in the days and the months uh, to come. But I also think that uh, that, that also is their a, a source of strength because these small towns will come together in their churches and their hockey arenas uh, and their schools to also come together and be the one family that they have always been.